Hey guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with another 7 ways to fill your notebook video. You guys really seemed to like the last one of these that I did, so I hope that you'll like this one as well. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. The first idea I have for you guys is to fill a notebook with lists. Now, I know that this may seem like a pretty basic idea, but one of the quickest and most useful ways to fill a notebook is by writing lists. There are so many different categories that you could write, ranging from practical things like to-do list to fun things like writing a list of your favorite movies. As you may have noticed from my 5 ways to fill your sketchbook slash notebook series, I'm definitely a fan of making lists. I came up with 20 different list ideas that you can write, and you can pause the video or look in the description if you want to read through them. I like working in a cheap plain notebook like this because there's no pressure to make it look nice like there is when working in a sketchbook. I know that a lot of people are getting towards the end of the school year, and all of the ideas in this video and my other notebook videos can be used to fill up the rest of those empty school notebooks. So here's how the finished page turned out, and you can pause if you want to read all of them. Some of my favorites are to create a 2019 playlist, adding a new song or two each month, which I'm actually doing and I'll show you guys that at some point, to list social media post ideas for YouTube, Instagram, etc. I do that all the time, to list books, movies, or shows that you want to watch or read, and projects that you want to make. Let me know which one of these ideas was your favorite. The second idea I have for you guys is to answer a question on each page. This is pretty similar to answering journaling prompts, but each prompt is in the form of a question. I always ask you guys questions at the end of my videos, and I think that it would be a good idea for me to write down each question that I ask so that I don't ask the same one twice. I came up with 20 questions, which again, you can pause the video to read. I'll also have all of the question ideas as well as the list ideas in the description of the video in case you can't read my handwriting. This idea was inspired by a book that I saw at Target called 3000 Questions About Me. If you need more ideas for questions, Google is definitely your friend and I'm sure that you can fill up a notebook in no time with this idea. The third idea is to use your notebook to practice hand lettering or calligraphy. There are so many fun and interesting fonts out there and here are a few of my favorites. The first idea that I have is to write your name using a different color for each letter. I find it really helpful to look up examples of calligraphy fonts to reference when I'm writing like this. The cool thing about doing this in a calligraphy font is that you can blend the markers together where each letter is connected. I used a white gel pen to add highlights on each letter, which I think gives it a really cool effect. For the second font, I wrote my name in all capital letters using an orange marker. Then, I went in with my black micron pen and I drew what was basically black slime dripping from each letter. This would be a great font to use around Halloween, and it's really easy to do. You could even switch up the colors, like maybe making the letters green and the slime pink. This is definitely something that you can be really creative and have fun with. For the third font, I did sort of an ombre or gradient effect. I wrote my name with a light green color, and then went over the middle with a dark green. I added blue on the bottom, and some highlights with a white gel pen like we did before. The fourth font is really simple. I wrote my name with a thin fine liner, and then I went over it with a Crayola Super Tip marker. I made sure that when I went over the fine liner, I stayed to the left of each letter to give it sort of a drop shadow effect. For the last font, I wrote my name in all capital letters, and did the same thing that we did with the ombre font. This time I used a light pink, dark pink, and purple. I outlined the letters with my micron pen, and added highlights with my white gel pen. Here's a quick look at all of the hand lettering ideas together. Let me know which one was your favorite in the comments. The fourth idea that I have for you guys is to make something that I'm going to be calling an inspiration journal. If you guys have ever heard of a vision board, this is a really similar concept, but it's just done in book form. Think about what inspires you, and keep all of it in this notebook. I personally find magazine images really inspiring, and I've been having fun gluing them on the back of the pages in my sketchbook. This is a great way to use both sides of a page when I use alcohol-based markers, since they tend to bleed through. Don't think too much when choosing the images, just cut out everything that catches your attention. You don't have to use magazine images though. You could write quotes if those inspire you, or add in photos that you've taken yourself. Use this notebook to jot down any ideas that you have, and look back on it when you're stuck for inspiration. 
If you learn a new skill, you can write down how to do it so that you don't forget, and look back later if you need to refresh your memory. When doing the pages in this video, I really thought about my goals and what I want to achieve in the near future, and I went through my collection of magazine clippings to find images that correspond with those goals. For example, I've always had trouble with procrastination, so for this collage I chose images of watches and the words maximize every second. So here's how that finished page turned out. I thought about adding more details like maybe with a sharpie or something, but I kind of like it simple like it is. The next page that I did was kind of random, but I'm sure that there's a message in there somewhere. I cut out an image of clouds from a Chanel ad, and then I glued on an image of a phone. On top of the phone, I put a cutout that says, unfollow people who bring you down, and I drew a hand grasping the phone with a sharpie. I cut the background to the size of the paper, and I finished the whole page before gluing it into the book, since I was drawing with a sharpie and I wasn't sure how it would turn out. Thankfully it turned out fine, at least I think that you can tell it's supposed to be a hand. I first drew the hand with a thin sharpie, and then once I was happy with it, I went over it with a thicker sharpie. And once that was done, I glued it into my sketchbook. The page was a little bit small, so I cut extra pieces to glue at the top. I had a bit of trouble getting the page glued on flat, but in the end I kind of like it. I definitely want to experiment with more pages like this. I'm sure I'm going to get some complaints when I do the sketchbook tour of people saying like sketchbooks are for sketching, like what the heck is this? But I really like making collages and I think that it's a great way to fit in more art on space that I wouldn't be using otherwise. The fifth idea that I have for you guys is to write scripts for YouTube videos. I used to be really opposed to writing scripts for my videos, but ironically writing scripts has helped me sound more natural. Before I started writing out what I wanted to say in videos, I would get comments saying that my videos sounded fake or scripted, and the reason for this is that because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to say, so I would start and stop recording roughly every 10 seconds. While you'd think writing a script would make editing take longer, it has actually saved me a ton of time editing. Without a script, I might mention the same thing twice, or I'd forget what I was saying and I'd have to re-record the section of dialogue. It is much easier to piece together 10 1 minute chunks of audio than 60 10 second clips. I also find that I have to go back and watch the video fewer times, which is nice. Obviously, you don't need to write out every single word that you want to say, but I find it helpful to at least write out my main talking points so that I don't forget anything. I've been writing scripts in the Notes app on my phone, but if you film or edit videos on your phone, writing it on paper might be a better option. I like doing it on my phone because it's something that I always have with me, and it allows me to multitask while I'm writing. Let me know if you guys would like to see how I edit my videos. I don't really do anything too fancy, but I have learned a few tricks over the years that makes editing a little bit faster and easier. The next idea is to use a notebook for scrap paper. This is something that I randomly thought of when I was working on coming up for the fonts that I was going to show you guys. I always find myself using scraps of paper for swatching pens in between pages when I'm using paint, and behind images when I'm gluing them down. If you have an old composition book that you aren't using, this might be a nice alternative to computer paper. You can keep this notebook on your desk and rip out a page every time that you need some scrap paper. I know that this isn't the most glamorous idea, but in my opinion, it's better to use those old notebooks instead of keeping them in a random drawer for the next 10 years. The last idea you've been seeing throughout the entire video and that is to make title cards for a video. This doesn't just have to be used for YouTube videos, you could also use it in short videos for TikTok or as an extra photo at the end of an Instagram post. I used to have a notebook back when I did Musical.ly that I used specifically for title cards. I know that this one doesn't apply to everyone, but I also know that a lot of you guys have your own YouTube channels and other social media accounts. This was a lot easier to do than making title cards in PicMonkey like I normally do, and I think that they came out a little bit cuter too. I had a lot of fun doing a sketchbook ideas video using your suggestions, and I think that a notebook ideas video would be fun to do as well. Leave me a comment letting me know how you fill your notebooks for a chance to be featured in a future video. So here are today's shoutouts. If you want a shoutout in my next video, go on to my desk makeover video that I just posted and leave me a comment telling me your favorite thing to do when you're bored. 
So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. And make sure to follow me on Instagram. It is at WellerMegs. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.